Hi, thanks for joining this study of the Gospel of John. Tonight, Marcus Watkins will be talking about this at 7 o'clock on the Maywood Facebook page, and I hope that you'll come and join and be a part of that. Um, let's go ahead now and begin reading in John's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 27. Jesus said, Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this very reason that I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came out of heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken. Jesus said, This voice has come for your sakes, not for mine. Uh, there are a lot of things I appreciate about the Bible. One of the things I appreciate is that the Bible authentically represents what takes place, whether it was in the Old Testament or in Jesus' day. Uh, if you read ancient writings, their heroes were more like Hollywood action stars, not real. When you read about the Bible heroes, they're very real and quite believable. So why does the Bible say that Peter denied Jesus three times? And the woman Mary Magdalene was the first to witness the resurrection of Jesus. That's the way it happened. Why does the Bible say that Jesus was deeply troubled as he contemplated the cross? Because that's exactly how he felt. Some early church heresies tried to deny Jesus' feelings. They falsely taught that Jesus really didn't suffer. Rather, he only appeared to suffer. Well, they were heresies because they were completely wrong about Jesus. Jesus genuinely suffered internal turmoil over the prospect of dying for the sins of the entire human race. However, despite the pain, Jesus said, Father, glorify your name. Well, what does it mean to glorify the Father's name? Well, a person's name is equivalent to that person's character. We have a saying, she has a good name. That means the person in mind has a good character, is reputable or something similar to that. When God's character is revealed, his name is glorified. So as we think of what we've read in John's Gospel, let's see what Jesus revealed as God's character to be like. Who is God? He is the one who is truly present in our lives to help us indeed. Multiple times we have noticed that God knows what we need is he's present in our lives. Uh, Jesus met the woman at the well, the paralytic by the pool, the woman caught in adultery, the man born blind, and the family of Lazarus. In each of these instances, he demonstrated love and gave them exactly what was needed. This is the nature of God. Who is God? He gives us free will, but he works to help us trust him. So Jesus comes where he's welcome, but he doesn't force himself on people who refuse to believe. He went to great lengths to convince an unbelieving crowd to place their faith in him. Uh, many of them rejected his message out of their personal agenda that was full of self-will. Jesus did not fail all of these people. In the book of Acts, we find large numbers of people in Jerusalem trusting their lives to Jesus. I believe Jesus' arguments with the religious leaders eventually paid off. Who is God? Well, the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, God is love. Every act of Jesus was an act of love. As we travel along with Jesus during his last week before crucifixion, we will increasingly see his love in action. Of course, the ultimate act of love was to be lifted up so he could draw all people to himself. John chapter 12, verse 32. When I look at some of the uh, ways of Jesus dealing with people in John's gospel, one of the things I like to do is to put myself in the middle of the Bible story. Pastor Jake uh, talked yesterday about walking with Jesus. And walking with Jesus with the gospel of John in our mind and heart is a great way to experience him. So let's, for example, take the paralyzed man by the well. You can find that in John chapter 5. So if you can imagine, you're just taking a walk. 
and as you're walking you get a mental picture of the pool with its smells and commotion. Now my neighbors might think I'm crazy because I usually do this out loud and I talk out loud a little under my breath but I talk about the pool and the smell and the commotion and the sheep and other people lying there and then I imagine that my family's brought me there day after day for years hoping for some sort of help and I'm desperate and I'm hopeless and Jesus comes by and he looks at me in the eye and nobody's looked me in the eye for a long time I'm just there bored out of my mind watching what's going on uh, people look away from me but Jesus doesn't look away he looks me right in the eye and then he asks me do you want to get well? well I feel totally hopeless and I tell him nothing's going to work now at this point as I'm taking a walk uh, I shift from the man and I think about myself and I think about sins that are hard to defeat or I think about some of my character issues or something else for that matter and you could do the same thing Well, after telling Jesus about what's going on and still in the story I hear Jesus tell me to do to do the very thing that seems impossible to accomplish and for a split second my will agrees with his will and something happens life starts coming into my paralyzed legs and I feel the strength to get to my feet to take up the pilot that I've been lying on for years and to walk well you kind of have an idea of how that uh, how that works for me and I'd really encourage you to experiment with it there are a number of encounters in, in John's Gospel that we can turn into these prayer experiences with him. And I think if you'll do it, you'll find a greater appreciation for God's wonderful character and his love for us. I hope you'll try it out. You, you heard the crowd say, it thundered. Well, thank God the Father spoke and he confirmed Jesus' place in his plan. And the Father spoke for the benefit of the people who were willing to follow his son Jesus. On the other hand, there were people who found a way to explain what had happened before their eyes by saying it thundered or by saying an angel had spoken. Uh, God always gives us two options when he's at work. One option is to trust him and to follow him. God's a gentleman. He's not going to kick down the door of our heart. He gives us the freedom to explain away his work to live apart from him. Now, let's turn to John chapter 12, verses 31 through 36, and listen carefully to verses 31 and 32. They're very important. Jesus says, Now the judgment of this world, uh, now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. And the crowd answered, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? And Jesus said, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you're going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of the light. Let's talk for a minute about the judgment of the world and of Satan. In what way was the world judged on the cross? Think about this. If Jesus' death on the cross is God's solution for the problems of humankind, then we really have serious problems. We may feel that we're pretty good people. The cross says not we are sinners who are in need of a Savior. In what way is the devil driven out? One day the devil will be completely destroyed. On the cross, Jesus worked so that the devil has no longer unlimited rule over the world. Think of the many people you know, yourself included, who have been conquered by the love of Jesus that was shown to us on the cross. The devil once controlled you and them who you're thinking about, but no longer. Praise God. Verse 32 says Jesus would be lifted up on the cross, and he would draw vast multitudes to him. 
He's done just that. He has become our best friend, our Lord, our Savior, and not just for us, but for the whole world. And in verse 35, Jesus said, Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. What a fantastic way to end our thoughts on this very important passage in John. Let's obey Jesus and walk in his direction. And pray with me, would you please? Dear Jesus, you're absolutely amazing. We praise you for all you did and are doing to show us the Father's love. Yes, Jesus, we will walk with you today. Well, thank you so much for listening. I pray that God blesses you. And I look forward to meeting with you while Marcus talks about this tonight at 7 o'clock on the Maywood Facebook page. God bless you.